I'm sure that to somebody, you know, just like looking at the school, it's just like, it's just a collection of buildings, you know. But as someone who went to the school, even just for a few years, you know, it's, it's really something that leaves an impact on you. The thing that made Hollowell so special to me was it was so different. You know, every day was like a new adventure. The school had its faults for sure, but I think the idea was, was really strong. To provide, you know, a different environment for kids, to really facilitate a different kind of learning. And you could really feel that from every teacher and from every, every building. It just, it exuded learning. Hollowell is the kind of place that you leave, but you never really stop thinking about. Like, it's always in the back of your head. You, you just come back to those memories of going classroom to classroom, of the playground, of, you know, the small things at the school. And going back now... Going back now is, is wild. North Smithfield is a pretty normal town. Nestled in the northwest of Rhode Island, North Smithfield was established in 1871. With a population of around 12,000 people and a total area of about 25 square miles, North Smithfield is a very small town. While the school system is especially small compared to other towns in the state, it's still frequently ranked highly in statewide reviews of the education systems. The town has five school buildings, with three still in use. North Smithfield Elementary School, North Smithfield Middle School, North Smithfield High School, Kendall Dean School, and Hollowell, with the latter two now being defunct. The Kendall Dean School is the oldest school in North Smithfield. Constructed in the 1930s, it was the home of all of the grade levels of the town up until the establishment of Hollowell. Like Hollowell, Kendall Dean is situated more northern than the other schools and is relatively far from the main parts of town. The school was closed after the establishment of Hollowell, as the larger size of the school was better fit for the growing population of the town. Today, Kendall Dean School has found new life, serving as the superintendent's offices for the school system. The only high school in town, NSHS was constructed in 1966. Previously, the students of the town had attended the high schools of neighboring and nearby towns. A fairly average school, NSHS is built in the shape of a large U and boasts two floors, as well as a gymnasium and an auditorium. The high school contained grades 6 through 12 up until the middle school was built, after which the school housed grades 9 through 12. The school was generally kept up, but remained relatively unchanged until 2019, in which new science labs were built within the facility. 1989 saw the completion of North Smithfield Elementary School. After NSES was built nearby the high school, the elementary grades were separated between Hollowell and NSES. Preschool through second grade attended NSES, and third grade through fifth grade attended Hollowell. The shape and design of NSES is somewhat similar to the high school, although with some key differences. While NSHS has two floors, NSES only has one. However, while both are generally shaped as a U, NSES is much larger and has more additions added upon the broad horseshoe shape. The school also has a playground and two blacktop areas, which is common among schools for such a young age range. The latest addition to the school comes in the form of an entirely new building connecting to the back of the facility. The latest school to be built in North Smithfield is the North Smithfield Middle School. Constructed in 2008, the school had a similar impact on the high school that NSES had on Hollowell. The addition of a new building 
allowed the high school to move some of its grades out of the facility. NSMS is arguably the flashiest of all the schools. At a whopping three floors, the school towers over the surrounding area. Just a quick glance at the school conveys that it is the newest in town. The building has a certain freshness that the others lack, with a modern looking cafeteria attached to the side giving the school even more of a contemporary feeling. While the school does not have a playground like the elementary school, it does share two baseball fields, two basketball courts, and a football field with the high school. Since the opening of the school, there have not been any major additions to the facility. The fifth and final school in North Smithfield is the Dr. Harry Hollowell Memorial School, or Hollowell, as it is colloquially known as within the town. Hollowell is without a doubt the most unusual school in town. Situated nearby Kendall Dean, the school is distant from the other schools not only spatially, but also structurally. From above, it is hard to even see it as a school. The area looks like a collection of similarly built houses, or perhaps a campsite. This is by design. Rather than being a single building, Hallwell was constructed as a California-style campus. These types of schools are made up of several small buildings, similar to that of a college campus. Hallways are non-existent. Instead, students utilize roofed paths open to the outside to get from place to place. These schools are especially popular in states such as California because of the weather conditions there. Since it is rarely cold out, the trek between pods is often a more pleasant experience for students than it would be in more standard hallways. For this reason, Hallwell was almost doomed to fail from conception. Built in 1957 on the grounds of a former sheep farm, the school was named after Harry L. Hallwell. Hallwell was born in the year 1922 and grew to become a medical doctor in town. He passed at the age of 32 from polio after spending the 1950s treating kids ill with polio themselves. The school was named after him, with a large portrait finding its home within the school to this day. The school features 11 buildings. Seven of the buildings are standard classrooms. These structures each feature two classrooms connected by a small entryway, with each building sharing a set of two bathrooms. There was also a building with a classroom on one side and a library on the other. The library was fairly unremarkable, but noticeably smaller than those found in all the other schools. In addition, there was the office building, which held both the school administration areas and the nurse's office. Finally, the largest building housed the multi-purpose area that students called the cafeteria because of the many purposes the building served. At some times, it was a cafeteria. At others, it was an auditorium. And at others still, it was the school's gymnasium. Hallowell was also home to a massive playground area. During recess, students were able to play amongst the several areas afforded to the recreational areas. There was of course the playground, which was considerably larger than that of the playground found at NSES. There was also the field, which was a large open expanse that students would frequently use for games of kickball, soccer, and more. Finally, in the space between the two, there was a fairly small hill with some benches and a massive oak tree. The tree served as a monument of sorts for the school, and is one of the most identifiable aspects of the campus, apart from its unique building design. In addition to this playground area, there was also a small blacktop area that was used as both an area for play and a parking lot at separate times. This blacktop held four basketball hoops, which was one piece of playground equipment not found down at the playground itself. For this reason, many students often preferred to spend their recess here rather than down at the playground. The recess, the good thing about that was it was such a large area. There was the playground, then there's the tree, and then there's the big dirt field. So it really allowed for a lot of different activities. Because of the way it was designed, you know, it kind of had this huge open plan. Like NSCS, Hollowell was recognized as a Feinstein leadership school. The Feinstein Foundation is an organization dedicated to encouraging students to do good deeds for one another. The foundation, which was started by Alan Sean Feinstein, rewards participating schools and students with discounts to different attractions in New England, as well as scholarship opportunities and grants. The imagery of the Feinstein Junior Scholar sweatshirts is incredibly iconic within the town, as it was a frequent choice of clothing for elementary students on picture days, and just other school days in general. Hallowell as a school had many positive aspects, with one being the annual D.A.R.E. kickball game. The D.A.R.E. program, which stands for Drug Abuse Resistance Education, 
is a nationwide program that educates the youth about the dangers of drugs and how to avoid using them. The program was for fifth grade students and acted as the final step towards graduating out of Hollowell and into the next grade. At the end of the year, the program hosted a kickball tournament down at the field for all the fifth grade classes to participate in. This was a massive occasion every year. Another thing that I really enjoyed was the D.A.R.E. program, which was preventing against drugs. I mostly like it because I won, so. Yeah. However, for the most part, Hollowell was something of a disaster. For one, the campus design was complete failure for a few distinct reasons. In New England, the weather is unpredictable. One day could be warm, while the next could suddenly be cold. A school in which the only way to get to the lunchroom was to go outside simply was not a good idea for the New England climate. In order to travel around the school, students would sometimes have to take time to get dressed for the cold weather that they would be facing, which took time of the learning that they should have been doing. The school, the biggest problem with the school is there was no walls in between the buildings, not even just like outdoor, like just a metal wall or something. That really limited everything, because I remember in the winter, Teachers just didn't want us to go to gym class or anything because it took like 10 minutes for everyone to put their jacket on, to go to gym, to go back. So it made things very difficult. And if the like quote unquote halls were crowded, you'd be like someone would be walking over the snow. Yeah. Because there wasn't any room on the sidewalks. As well, there were issues with the related arts classes. Hollowell had five special classes, with those being gym, library, art, music, and health. However, of those five classes, only two had their own classrooms. Gym class had the gymnasium, and library class had the library. This left art, music, and health without a classroom to call their own, so those teachers were instead given carts. The teachers would move around from class to class, which was a less than optimal situation to say the least. Classes such as art and music are often very equipment heavy which meant that teachers sometimes had to haul very full carts around the campus. Days of poor weather made this even worse. Related arts teachers would either have to brave the outside and lug their materials amidst the colder rain, or they would simply be forced to cancel their class. This option, of course, brought up other issues. Since classroom teachers would use the time that their students were at related arts classes for prep, they were sometimes left without any prep time. As time went on, the condition of the school worsened. Some classrooms did not have working heat during the winter, and others faced leaky ceilings and roofs. Ants were a frequent visitor in classrooms, and sometimes, so were rodents or other critters. By the time we were going, it was kind of decrepit. Um, they kind of didn't do a good job with the maintenance during its later years. Um, I know there were a lot of plumbing issues, they, like there'd just be holes in the, the, the pathways, like the concrete would be breaking apart. There was no easy fix to these issues. Many of the problems the school faced were structural and would require enormous amounts of funding in order to repair. For this reason, many of the issues went unrepaired. The school gained a reputation for being in such poor condition, especially when compared to the sleek and modern middle school that followed. It got to such a point that the only real solution was to close down the school. Rumors about the school closing down began a long time before any real decision would be made. At the end of every school year, there was talk that Hollowell would not be opening back up next fall. The school could not simply be closed down. Since the school housed three grade levels, space was inevitably going to be an issue at the other facilities. However, in the 2010-11 school year, an experiment of sorts was conducted. Two third grade classes were moved to some of the extra classrooms in NSES. While there weren't enough classrooms to take on the whole of Hollowell, this made the closure of the school seem like it would be a lot more possible. The cost of Hollowell began to outweigh its value. In 2017, over $80,000 was budgeted towards the school in order to keep it open for a few additional years. This money went towards fixing the roofs of the cabins and the bathrooms, which were rapidly becoming near unusable. New furniture was purchased as well, but these were not meant to be permanent fixes. They were simply meant to buy time for the school, as the town moved towards preparing the other schools for additional students and grade levels. The facility was finally closed down for the 2019-20 school year, with the completion of the new addition to NSES. With the closure of the facility, grades three and four moved into NSES, 
while grade five moved into the middle school. Today, the school stands in even worse condition than it has ever been in. The future of Hollowell is currently unknown. While there have been some attempts to keep the school from falling into complete disrepair, the school is an absolute shell of what it used to be. Talks have been made about what will happen to the school, with one possibility being that the area will be converted to a community center, with a focus placed on resources for senior citizens. A firm has been paid to assess the land, meaning something will undoubtedly be happening within the near future regarding the former school. Whatever ends up happening to the school, the legacy of Hollowell is undeniable. The school will be remembered for the many happy memories it brought to its students and staff, but also for trying something different. The Dr. Harry L. Hollowell Memorial School has left a deep impact on the town of North Smithfield that will be remembered for many years to come.